from uh, the Manipal Hospital in India, and he's going to talk to us about the IBM artificial intelligence platform called Watson. Thank you very much, and uh, I thank uh, San Antonio Symposium to allowing us an opportunity to present it. So my particular study today uh, is I have no disclosures, uh, anything, and there is no conflict of interest. We have not received any funding for this. It's purely uh, physician investigator driven. Uh, so the particular study result I'm going to present today is uh, the double blind concordance study for breast cancer treatment. The recommendation between what is standard a group of oncologists, tumor board, multidisciplinary tumor board at the quaternary cancer center where I practice, which is the university hospital, versus the artificial intelligence Watson for oncology developed by IBM. Uh, we know that there is vast amount of data uh, that's uh, coming up for a physician and oncologist who is treating, and if you see that clinical factors contribute only 10% of it, which would be about 0.0 terabytes, and then the genomic factor into six, and if you look at all the lesion in a patient, there is about 1,100 TV data which a physician needs to analyze to individualize the medicine in that patient. And then there's an outburst of knowledge everywhere, and this is how the evolving of the cognitive uh, thing happened. And we started from a tabulating era, and we are at a tabulating cognitive system. But in spite of this, we are just at not even the middle part of the zenith. So the IBM Watson, which is developed in oncology, is something which understands the natural language, adapts and learns, and it uses its hypothesis based on the best available evidence and throws up the best treatment for the patients. Uh, the Watson for Oncology is developed in collaboration with MSK, Memory and Sloan Kettering Physicians, the researchers, IBM researchers, and over 1,000 plus training cases has been put and a lot of logs has been happened, and that's how it developed. The beauty of this system is when we adopted it, uh, it's not a new system, it is integrated into our HIS system. This is how an HIS in my hospital look when I walk into my system, uh, even when I log into my system with a user ID, I would see all the patients, inpatient, outpatient who are scheduled, and you see a button next to that called Ask for Watson. If you click that, it not only reads the structure, it also reads the unstructured data. It zips through all the physician written notes, patient's notes, all the investigation, PET scan, everything. So it is integrated with our HIA system and in 40 seconds it makes a summary of the patient uh, which is available for us. And it throws out the output in three categories, the green, amber and the red. And then it shows what is recommended, what is for consideration, which means the green and the amber both are practicable and what is not recommended. This is just one of the screenshot of uh, the dish and you can see that the, the treatment that needs to be done, it gives the entire algorithm of the treatment, the sequencing of the chemo, the surgery, radiation, what regime, what dose, and how it comes at exact point. Not only that, when you select two different groups, suppose you have something in a green recommendation and an amber recommendation, you can at a click of button see the difference between both of them. Like it would say, if you follow this decision based on the current available evidence, 95% is the DFS, 75% is the OS. So it compares between the two groups, which is easily available based on all the recent evidence and the trials, which actually gets it. So uh, the study which we did is when we adopted this system uh, at our hospital, uh, we as a physician and the MDT team, uh, uh, we wanted to know where does this sit, how useful is this cognitive intelligence for a physician as a companion, and where and where it sits vis-a-vis -vis the current standard of treatment which we practice at our cancer center. So uh, in the breast cancer, it was the 638 patients, and then every patient was discussed in a joint tumor board, which is a multidisciplinary tumor group, which is a standard of care in every cancer center. And in a blind manner, the decision was captured and then the same thing a two group of oncologists who is not privy to this actually enter every patient's data into the Watson for Oncology and we capture the spreadsheet. We know that the Watson for Oncology edition is current as of now today with the evidence and when you have a patient which is spanned over years, we wanted to make sure there is no error in that. So the patients where we didn't concord at a different time of zone, real time, we took back those patients and re in the multidisciplinary tumor board to see was there any difference. So this is the study design we actually had. If you see at the group of patients, breast cancer is a cluster of different patients, the HER2 new positive hormone receptor varies. Across the group, if you see that 79% concordance was there over two different time zones when we had it. And in the metastatic, the concordance was 46%. So 
when you look back this particular we we selected only those patients where they didn't concord which fell into two group uh, the red which is not recommended not available and then we re-reviewed those decisions to make sure that the evidence is based on as of now current standard. So when we re-reviewed these patients, you can look back 63% of the time the decision changed. So the, the decision changed 63% of the time we were able to change the decision based on the current available evidence. So the conclusion, if you see that uh, the evidence based on two different zone of time, Finally, the concordance with the Watson for Oncology and a group of multidisciplinary tumor board group of patients was 90. It was 90% of the time the Watson for Oncology concorded with the group of top oncologists sitting in our institution, which we come to addition based on that. So this study actually is only for concordance. This is we, the scope of this study was not to test who is more right, who is less right, MDT missed anything or Watson threw up more. That was not the part of this study, not superiority or inferiority. And then this was totally a blinded one when we blinded it and we re-reviewed 90% of the time the multidisciplinary tumor board decision and Watson for oncology matched. And Watson for oncology reduces the cognitive burden on the oncologist by providing clinically actionable insight to assist the treating physician. And it's a promising cognitive computing tool that warrants further evaluation in many prospective trials across different multidisciplinary tumor board across many institutions. And the role will be consultative because we know that when you treat a patient, it's always a human clinical judgment and one-to-one -one doctor patient relationship which comes. And the Watson for Oncology not only gives the right treatment, it also tells the complication that comes, the incidence at which it comes, which you can give back to the patient, and the high level of evidence which arrived at the particular edition which most of our patients love. And I need to thank uh, my research fellows at Manipal Hospital and Dr. Martin and Dr. Andrew for extensively uh, helping in analyze this particular thing. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I guess this is not going to put us out of business as physicians. Uh, at least I hope not. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's a very u essential, useful tool, and it's not a replacement to a physician. Right. Which is very important. Uh, Can you explain again the blinded concordance of 73 percent and then the 90 percent what's the okay. difference between those yeah uh, as as we know that uh, we had a patient spanning over three years uh, which means uh, there were some decision and mdt made uh, like uh, in our hospital the mdt meets twice a week every patient goes through the mdt we document it in our file so there was a couple of patients which were uh, two year old and then that decision was tried with Watson of oncology as of now the Watson of Oncology uses the current evidence as of today. So we wanted to see those patients where we didn't concord case by case, why we didn't concord and we re-challenge those cases with the MDT as of now. So when the MDT went with those cases as of now with the current evidence, then the decision changed. So then because Watson for Oncology used as of today two different time zones, but the MDT used over past three years. So that's when the concordance came exactly to the 90%. Hi, uh, Neil Osterweil with Oncology Practice. Just uh, curious about the costs of the system. Do you, is there a contract? Is there, do you pay by interrogation? Um, Thank you very much. Uh, mm, unfortunately, I'm, I might be a chairman and also, but I'm a clinician. Uh, this is uh, an agreement between my institution and IBM, which I'm actually not privy. Uh, but in our institutions, uh, it is not charged to the patient. It is integrated. We have uh, 16 hospitals across India, uh, uh, second tier and quaternary. It is available to every oncology physician and at no cost to the patient for us. But what is the cost it took for my institution to take? Uh, I'm extremely sorry. I'm not privy to that. Mm -hmm. and, and just one other question, please. What, what do you, how do you decide when you want to, when you want to ask what's and what are the, for you, the determining factors? Okay. Uh, uh, initially, when we started six months back, uh, we used to take only those cases which we felt was tough or in MDT it was difficult. But now, every patient which is walking into our cancer center, we are taking a Watson opinion because it's not charged to the patient. So. Uh, Currently, it is offered to every of our patients. So the physician has it as an assistant clinical companion for every patient to make a decision to make sure that we have not missed any of the best available evidence as of now to personalize the treatment to that patient. Thank you. <coughs> I, I, hi, I'm Michael Smith, MedPage. Uh, I, I want to go back briefly to this whole concordance thing. Uh, see if I understand it, and if I don't, you can tell me where I'm wrong. So you had a just a set of 638 patients, you 
looked back at their diagnosis and treatment plans and then saw, asked what Watson would do and found 73% concordance. And then for some of those patients, um, but, but presumably not all, you th because they would have been treated, uh, some of them would have been treated. You then went oh, and, yeah. and had a second tumor board meeting and uh, found that in, in light of better evidence, uh, you now agreed 90% of the time. Is, is, that, is that roughly yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, um, it's a double-blind study. Uh, we, have, we had already documented what MDD recommend for these uh, patients already. But there are two different zones. So we, we didn't take random patients. We took only those where we didn't concord. Because where uh, the Watson for Oncology and MDT concorded, that's, uh, there's no controversy. We wanted to see those group of patients where the Watson for Oncology and MDT didn't concord. Every of those patients, I told you it falls into three categories, uh, not available and not recommended. All those patients we took back to MDT as of now uh, in the last month and recheck with the current evidence. So then the MDT rec uh, you know, uh, agreed upon this based on the new evidence and that's when the concordance came. What came out of this particular thing is Watson based it as of now today in the uh, evidence, but an MDT was a two different zone. So we took every patient we didn't concord. So then it's 90%. So finally, uh, the conclusion of my study is uh, the Watson for Oncology concorded 90% of the time in breast cancer patient to an MDT at Medical Hospital. Okay, I think I understand that. Thank you. I hope. Hi, uh, Elaine Shatner, uh, contributor to Forbes. Uh, okay. I'm interested in the IBM project, and I hope you'll take these two questions in the context of my optimism about it in general and the future. So first, a question of which is clinical, why do you think the discordance was greater for metastatic cases, yeah. where Watson would may be more important than it was for early stage patients? And my second question is ethical, which is that IBM is a U.S. company, and one of the selling points of, of Watson, like all the other IT, you know, health, oncology data collecting systems, which is what this is, um, it's supposed to be, the data is supposed to be anonymized, and you show a list with patients' names. So I don't know if those are real patients' names or not, oh, no. but that concerns not. me. <laughs> oh, no. So uh, how are you addressing consent and anonymization? And the first is a very simple question about why, or not so simple, but about why uh, the oncologists are less good at knowing what Watson knows or Watson is less good at knowing what the oncologists know about metastatic disease. Thank you. Uh, I'll answer the second question. Okay. Uh, at no place, uh, patient's name is done. Absolutely no. Uh, none of them are real, and it's... Uh, Absolutely not. So these are just uh, uh, fabricated names? Yeah, uh, it's absolutely, yeah. Uh, total confidential of the patient, which is prime, and it's absolutely not. And everywhere it's supposed to be who are escorted it to be so mentioned, none of them is real. Esther, Satya, and they have last names. No, yeah. none of them are uh, there, and I'm sure if you see the full length article, nah, uh, none of them are real patients. It's uh, see, absolutely the second question. Numbers. Absolutely. Great. Okay, thank you. We, we know that no matter what happens, confidentiality is number one. It's, it's the right, and uh, that answers the second one. I'll come back to the metastatic. Uh, if you look at the first time zone when we took it, uh, the concordance, the, it, it was low, about 43, 45. Uh, but when we revisited those patients we didn't agree upon, that metastatic group subset, uh, in those group actually it was about 80% later in the second, but that's why the concordance came to 90. But I'll specifically take this particular question in metastatic, especially in heart immune negative, why is it that we differed? We look at those patients individually. You know, if you see the current standard of treatment based on evidence in a metastatic breast cancer is uh, if a patient performance status is good, a single agent regime because we know there is no overall survival difference in them. Uh, this is true and this is the evidence, this is what every oncologist would agree and that's exactly what Watson true. But if you see the way it is applied in Asian countries, the way the practice happens in India or Asia or Australia or everywhere, our patients don't have second, third, fourth chance the way it is there in Europe and here. Here you take a single agent, you have a response, you don't have second, third, fourth, fifth. But due to the peculiarity of geographic and the way practice it happens in oncology in Asian countries, our patients don't come second, third, fourth, fifth. So even though we know it's not a overall survival, it, it, the oncologists tend to use a doublet regime with a better response rate even though we know that it may not be having a survival. This is the specific reason that that particular group didn't concord and that doesn't put an MDT or a Watson for oncology superior or inferior. We as a clinician went back and looked at that particular 
things and this is the explanation for that uh, so but when you go back uh, uh, the recommendation and the evidence on which watson based was right but this is what practically followed that's exactly what was my study uh, what is what to be done and what can be done is different i think Thank i think you. the uh, what he's saying is there's many choices yes many more choices for treating a metastatic patient that are probably all correct and yeah. depending on that particular patient and other factors that are hard to capture so I, I'm not surprised at all that the uh, I'm not surprised. Was it wasn't clear to me which way it went, which if the <coughs> if Watson knew more or the oncologist knew more. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's very nice to put it up, but this, uh, the purpose of the study is not a superiority of either of them. Uh, we wanted to just check the concordance, but there is a second part of the study. But when we look back these particular patients, uh, I told you in metastatic when we revised it, it was at 80, but still 10% uh, yeah. short of 90, but the recommendation was evidence-based. But practically, when you apply to each individual patient, the metastatic has got so much of variable, so many treatment option, uh, no one option is always wrong or right. So which, which as a clinician, I'm very happy because that actually showed the strength of our study, which is in line with what I expect. Right, thank you. Thank you. We have time for one last question. And please remember the speakers will be available after the press conference to answer additional questions. I'm, I'm wondering if the, if in the future, if IBM Watson, this tool, is going to be useful for co-engagement of shared decision making between the doctor and the patient, not just you know between the medical doctors deciding whether or not um, you know the concordance. And and just one more thing about the database that the Memorial Sloan Kettering tool is based on. It's a finite cur curated corpus, not a body of knowledge that Watson is feeding off of. It's not the World Wide Web that the in this case the tool that you're using is specifically curated by Memorial. A, specific group of papers that they chose to be relevant. But it's not, just people know, it's not like IBM Watson is hooked up to the World Wide Web's data on onco oncology papers. Okay, um, when Watson takes it up, it is not just one set of MSK. It was trained by MSK, uh, but it doesn't limit only to that. It has an access to uh, 15 billion pages published, 200 textbooks, and about 2,400 journals. Uh, even though it is real-time tested, but it is not limited only to the MSK curated patients alone. That is one of the essential part, but it has an access to all of them. So when, when we click a button, Watson, ask for Watson, in 60 seconds, not only it sees the curated data, which is trained by MSK physician, but it also has an access to all the publications which is there. So that's very important. That's why it is cognitive, and it is not static, and it keeps learning. The second, uh, the other issue you asked is, uh, I don't foresee at this moment that it's a replacement of a doctor. It's a very useful companion uh, to the doctor, and it's not just available for physician. In our institution, it's available for a patient, but not that patient walks in and takes it. It's only and only through a physician. They can ask for what's an opinion where patients come, but it is in consultation with physician because it's a useful companion to the patient and not a replacement because the treatment is an individualized human. This one is not just m you know mechanical alone. A lot of things go into this. Uh, but as of now, it is not between patient and Watson alone. It's always a physician, companion, via that. But patients can ask for it, and they're entitled in my institution. When you get the result, you have your thoughts and the Watson So Do you actually tell the patient, yes. well, Watson says this, I say this? Uh, we, we, uh, the Watson would actually give a 40-page uh, printout, and our institution has worked out a uh, consent form with an MDT that we tell them we are going to do it, and then we hand over actually to the patient. And we tell this is the MDT, this is the Watson, and this is the evidence. Uh, since last couple of months, our patient has an, uh, we give the printout to the patient. We, c we clearly tell them. <coughs> Dr. Osborne, what are the chances of this being used in the United States, and is it being used anywhere in the United States? The re in other words, the relevance of this Watson talk to yeah, there are a number my, of my readers. <coughs> yeah, there are a number of institutions that are using it in still in the developmental setting, as far as I know. I don't know of anybody that's using it as a clinical tool as they are here in, um, in India. Um, but I think, there I think there will be a place for it in the United States. It's just uh, still early in development. How would it be used? Yeah, I think, well, there's a, yeah, there's a number of things that it would be useful to do. If it collects all this data on all the aspects of the patient, including their future genomic data and that sort of thing, 
um, it could be very useful because there's so much data to think about and to organize into your mind that uh, I think that's where it's really going to be helpful. And I think it will be helpful, just like uh, it'll be part of the EMR almost, the electronic medical record. Uh, it'll help us in difficult diagnoses. It'll help us, you know, select the proper therapy, considering all these variables. Uh, so I think there's a number of potential uses for it. I just want to add one line. Uh, the way we are using in India is we are a cluster of 16 cancer centers across the India. Uh, every center of Manipal Hospital doesn't have a quaternary MDT like where I practice. So we have a secondary tire, uh, community oncology uh, for us. Now every clinician across all the group in Manipal group in India of 16 institutions is empowered with this. So if you have a community oncologist who is not private to a group of MDT, MDT is quite uh, tough and expensive, you know, you need to sit and finite uh, thinking. Every patient goes through that, a community oncologist would put into Watson, he knows what needs to be done and you don't have to run back to an MDT in the center place every time. So a community oncologist will know what is the right treatment, uh, so we are not missed anything. So uh, even an MDT, now we have made it a very useful companion with us. So in a short time, we arrive at diagnosis. It's an important companion for us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, Nick Mulcahy from Medscape. I just make an observation, and then maybe uh, the uh, clinicians on the panel can react to it. Um, every time we run a story on the electronic health records, you know, we just get rage in the comments section from doctors. So what this represents is another layer of technology in everyday practice. I mean, that's the, that's the practical aspect of it. The idea that it would be embedded in an electronic health record, you know, really? You know, so <clears throat> that's, that's my question to the clinicians on the, on the panel. Do you look forward to having another layer of technology in your daily practice? I think this one would actually help. <laughs> <laughs> For a change, The reason yeah. nobody likes the electronic medical record, number one, is we're not all that computer savvy, at least people my age are not. But also, it, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit more work to, for the physician to record all the stuff and put it into the computer as opposed to dictating like we used to have a, a secretary type it. Um, so it, that's, that's the problem, but that's, that's not what Watson is going to do. Watson will be there in the background in the medical record and we push a button and it'll say use cytoxin in this patient or whatever it might be. Just like the Jetson. Yeah. Uh, and then it would give an evidence. Uh, th that's what we loved. Uh, when, when our hospital took, we thought that there's one more uh, burden to a physician. Uh, but it was integrated into our EMR and it just goes through all the records and zips through. Pages of a printout comes from 40 to 60. In a metastatic setup, uh, it See, the recommendation printout is one page, uh, but why you arrived at uh, is next 30, 40 if you want. There's no end. Uh, one is it will tell the right treatment, then the evidence behind that, all of them, and then the complications of them and the outcome. So if you want only the recommendation, one print. If a patient wants to know everything, it can go up to 40. We just put it in a PDF file and uh, mail to the patient through hospital official email. Yeah, the report report is one, but the appendum is thirty forty, which exactly is not the report. Doctor Blaze, uh, I don't know if this mic is working, but I would just add, you know, your question about how else will do we see this used? I mean, most of us all work in academic institutions where we have access to top experts that are at this meeting. There's a lot of oncology that happens in the community where those oncologists are, you know, they would have privy to sort of the latest research and keeping up on all of that. And to me, that's also some of the advantage. Um, and that's what you were saying, that sort of across your 16 center um, cancer centers, um, you've been able to basically provide everyone with the same tools. And to me, that's one of the advantages of a system like this is if you're getting care at the University of Minnesota or you're in rural Minnesota, Little Falls, um, and you, there's an oncologist that's there once a, a month, you, you're getting the same expertise and care and that consultation. I, I would agree with you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. This thank concludes you. our press conference.